All right, and with that, as promised, we bring on the head coach of the SU Women's Basketball Program, Felicia Leggett Jack, uh, joining us. Coach, we really appreciate you finding a, a few minutes for us here. Uh, how are you today? Oh, fantastic. Thank you. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. We're, We're doing good. well. Um, you know, let, let's uh, – Let's start with the, the game last night, and we'll, we'll kind of go from there. You know, it's a it's a game. You're 2-2 you're two and two going into it, Albany in town. Um, your ladies jump out to a 14-point lead, and then, you know, Albany comes back in the second quarter, and then it was nip and tuck the rest of the way, and, and, and they hit a late three, and, and you end up losing by that by that late three-pointer. Well, walk us through the game and, and, and what happened that it kind of got away from you down the stretch. Well, before I go to that, I think it's important I share with my great community that, you know, I see you, I feel you, and I, I, I honor you, and I appreciate the support that I, I do receive uh, at this uh, amazing school that I call, I get to coach at, I get to coach at, and I certainly use language that I'm not proud of in, in the press room, and uh, that doesn't fit my character, or the character I have for my family, nor for my team, or the people that I surround myself with. So for that, you know, I definitely want to apologize for, but I, I, I hope that we understand that, you know, I value my fans and my uh, my friends that do come. Half the fans that come to the game, they're my family, by the way. <laughs> you know, I'm from a big family here, and, and uh, cousins all over the place, and they all support, and they all come and really you know, rally behind what we're trying to build here. And for that, I thank everyone. But what happened in that game, uh, we just couldn't find that synergy. We kept having energy and it fell apart. Energy, it never connected to the synergy where we were on all cylinders. And, you know, I, I felt like our, our bigs didn't run the floor as they needed to. I thought Isa did a tremendous job, but I certainly uh, didn't find you know, the other two to three bigs to, to really kind of roll with her, if you will. And you can't say enough about what, you know, Georgia tries to do and, and gets done. But we needed more people to show up uh, during stretches in that second and third quarter. All right. You know, you, you brought up the post game comments and, and let's go there next. And, you know, we know that you are passionate. You're passionate about this team. You're passionate about the university. You're passionate about this city. Uh, you were very passionate uh, in that that post game press conference last night. What, what what sparked those comments, coach? Was it was it the loss? Was it something that happened last night? Was it is, you know something that's been on your mind for a while? What, what kind of sparked, um, you know, that reaction in post game? Well, if you if to know me and to be my friend, you know that the loyalty and the commitment that you're going to have is one thousand percent. And so, my two kids were in the hallway and they were really emotional, and I really had to gather their energy back to getting composed to be a professional because they're both going to go out and be professionals at the end of the season. We got to go out there and do our job, and I got them ready. We came in that press conference, and everybody's laughing and having a good time. It's a social atmosphere. And I'm thinking, like, crap. Everybody doesn't see it the way I see it, the way we see it and feel it. And that really sparked something in me, and it made me just have a conversation with my players publicly. And I share with them Everybody don't see women's basketball the way we see it or feel it the way we feel it, but that's okay. We still have to feel it and see it and love it because we're going to find an ego or two, which if we got many fans that really support and come consistently to our game, but I need our players to understand that moment and see it for what it is. We got to get back on uh, and to tend to tend to the sheep, get the work harder, understand that, there's going to be days we're going to feel all alone, but the fight still is necessary. That's why you see we fight on everywhere that I uh, I partake in and is signing autographs too. But it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, when you use those definitive words like nobody and everybody, and uh, it, it becomes something that it sticks and it, and it speaks louder than it needs to. And I, I I put put that out there, and for that I I I, I need to take those words back. Because there's there's some loyal 2,000 fans that show up for women's basketball. There's some people that has reached out to me from some really major places uh, in our community who share with me that raise their hand and say, I'm guilty. I don't come to the games. I need to start coming. Uh, you call me out, and I'm on my way. And so it, for that, I am glad we did say it because – now we're finding those other people that's kind of saying, I just wa listen to it ready on the radio or watch it on the ACC network. They're saying they're going to start coming. So for that, I'm really excited because one thing that if you know me for a second, 
I'm loyal to my people. I'm loyal to my community. I'm loyal to my home. I'm grateful I get to be here. And I don't take one of these days for granted. But there is times I need to talk to my players. And that time I used a, a public moment to share some information with my student athletes. So along those lines, Coach, you, you know, you've said in the past, we we don't lose. We either win or we learn. Yes. Uh, you know, last night last night you didn't win. So what what do you hope your players and and maybe the community as well. What, what do you hope you know everyone I guess collectively takes away from that outcome last night and and what happened last night? Well, we did win. You know, you know, some people look at I've been doing this for thirty seven years, and some people get stuck onto this number of uh, the points say you're winners, the points says you're says you're losers. I thought I think that we've learned some lessons uh, through this um, last night. I've learned lessons too that no matter what you do you don't release your character to people's external things and I, I let my character escape me and for that I've learned how to now take that back uh, we've learned that you know we can't continue to mess up that second quarter that we all know that is eluding us for some reason first year was the fourth quarter then we'd be down 18 points last year in the fourth quarter and, and everybody expected us to win because we've done it twice right and so now it's this number two. I tell you what, isn't it kind of ironic? The number two is um, what's dating <laughs> us. And that number two was such a big number for us our last couple of years here. So I think it's God playing a little trick on me and I'm going to stay happy. Sometimes you got to dance in the rain. And right now we're dancing in the rain and we don't see ourselves as losers. Or the score says that we lost a few games. But the things that we're learning with this young team, not young in age and years, but young. And we got six new players, and uh, we're going to take some time to figure out how to mold that energy and to create some synergy. Yeah, it's funny you, you bring up the number two. You, you certainly miss uh, having the Asia Fair around, and <laughs> you know, and, and we're kind of seeing this with the men's team as well. That uh, you know, it doesn't just you don't just snap your fingers and and all of a sudden it happens, right? I mean, can you speak to the, I guess the learning curve? that you and this team, it's a process, right, Coach? I mean, the, the process that you are going through trying to replace one of the all-time greatest scorers in the history of women's college basketball, uh, you don't just snap your fingers and, and make it better, right? We're going to make it better, but it's going to it's taking more time than I want. You know, we came here, we had four players that stayed, and we brought in eight players, and we made it happen. We won 20 games. And then the next year they said, well, it's that, that was a fluke. Nobody knew who you were, and then – we, we ended up winning 24 games and getting to the second round of the NCAA. And so, you know, now we got used to this thing called winning and with points being more than the opponent. And we, we got an expectation, right? And and now the Asia goes and she's in Egypt right now playing professional basketball. And we have to fill that, that gap and that, that, that responsibility. And we're getting better in every single game. But the, 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 the fans want to see the, the, the points say we won. And we haven't given them that consistently. I don't think we've lost three games in, in non-conference in the last two years. And so I get the anxiousness. I get the, uh, the, the, the concern. Uh, but we are working in the dark and we are going to continue to get better. And I hope that, you know, more do come out and watch us play because I think what they'll see is young people becoming young adults and these young adults are going to be professional women one day and some people can learn from these young ladies and I know I learn every day and so um the work is not easy is but it's necessary and and I'm the person for the job yeah I want to get back to the support piece of it kind of a two-part question do you feel as though you're getting the support from the university that you need and want and <laughs> If you're not getting the support from the community that you need and want, what, what will it take to kind of to, to get that? What, you know, what, what are you looking for in an ideal situation with the support piece of this? We definitely need more here. You know, we certainly want more. Um, I should say we don't need because, you know, we, we, we didn't have even a secretary when I got here. Uh, but we we we, uh, we found a way to, to have success, and I, I think winning is easy. Here I am, um, two and three right now, uh, so you win with what you have, and that's let's put that on the table first. But you know, we we certainly need to raise more money for my program so I can uh, have the necessary uh, situations and name, image, and likeness. We need to get more uh, financial in in uh, in that situation. We lost our 
our best post player to Tennessee, um, Lisa Latham, uh, because we just didn't have it. We didn't have the money. We couldn't even have get in a conversation with what Tennessee was offering. We certainly want more positions for, for my, my staff. We would like to be equal to the top five programs in the conf- in our conference. We're not there yet, and, and we hope to get there. But this is my home, man. And so sometimes, you know, when you're when you home, you can talk like you're from the, your, your city. And so I called my city out, and I told them I need them. And I know they're coming, and I know they're going to support me. Certainly didn't want to swear. Certainly didn't want to you know, say it in, in a derogatory way that I said it, but, you know, we, we get out in that community. I work for the housing authority. I work for West Hill. I work for the suburbs. I work for inner city. I was out there in this community when I was here and my players were out there in that community. All I ask of them is that when we're in our toughest situation where our fans, our, 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 our team is youthful when in, and and all being together, I, I'd love to see more butts in the seat. And, um, that's the way I should have said it, but I said it a little bit harsh, and that's not it, what's expected from me. That's not the hugs that I give out to everybody I meet, uh, but I was frustrated, and even I can have a bad day, and um, I'm certain my community is going to forgive me. And uh, No doubt about that, and uh, you know, uh, you've know you got uh, a couple of road games here before uh, we get a chance to see you back in the Dome again. You're back in the Dome on December 1st, but prior to that, uh, hitting the road, heading down to Florida uh, for the, the Emerald Coast Challenge. you got Missouri on Monday and either Creighton or Wichita State on Tuesday. Good opportunity there to you know bounce back against some, some Power 5 opponents, Power 4 opponents. What, what are you hoping to accomplish, uh, Coach, with this trip down to Florida? Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to hunker down and, and really dive into these teams because these are great. This is Big East. This is SEC country now. So we're coming from the pot to the fire. So I'm getting ready to put my mind totally on um, on those two teams. And that this is the last conversation I'm gonna have about what we talked about today because I, I I gotta I gotta give my players the attention they deserve and they 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 need when as well as my coaches. And so. Uh, I, I know it's going to be difficult. Uh, we're going to, I promise you, we're going to leave it out there. We're going to continue to add one more minute to our intensity of purpose and every single day. And if we can continue to just continue to get better by December, we're going to be a little bit better. We're going to have a tough situation in December with the yells coming to town and this team called Notre Dame that we beat twice last year. And I think they got a little bone to pick with us, if you will. And so, but I think that we're going to continue to get better. But if you stay with us, if you continue to believe that we can do this thing, I promise you, we're going to give you our best effort. All right, Coach. Uh, we really appreciate you finding a few minutes for us today. Uh, enjoy the trip. I hope it goes well. And, again, open invitation anytime you want to come on. We do appreciate the time. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for all you do. And let's go, Orange. All right, Felicia Leggett-Jack joining us here on the program. And with that, we'll hit a timeout.